Hi, I'm Sunir Mpulisi, one of Osan Air Base's passport agents. In this video, I'll be discussing how to apply for a special issuance passport. Here you can see the overview of what will be discussed, such as applying for a SIP and what to do next. First, what is a SIP? A SIP is a special issuance passport issued by the U.S. government. The three most common SIPs are no-fee passports, official passports, and diplomatic passports. The SIP that we see a lot are no-fee passports, which are blue in color and look a lot like a tourist passport. However, the difference is they are used for official travel of military dependents. On page 26 of the old no-fee passports, it will state that it is a no-fee passport. On the new no-fee passports, it will be on the page next to the identification page. Next, we have official passports, which are red in color and used for official travel. DOD civilian employees and dependents are authorized to apply for official passports. Military members can apply for these passports only if they are going on a TDY to a location that requires an official passport per the Foreign Clearance Guide, or if they are PCSing and they have a personnel processing code that states one is required. Popular locations, but are not limited to, are NATO Headquarters, Thailand, Gylokirkin NATO Air Base, and NATO Rapid Deployable Corps. Lastly, we have diplomatic passports, which are black and used for official travel. DOD civilian employees, dependents, military members, and their dependents are authorized to apply if they are going to a location that requires a diplomatic passport per the Foreign Clearance Guide. The most common location would be embassies. So how do you apply for a SIP? First, open Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome as these browsers work the best. Then, in the search engine, type in travel.state.gov. The picture below is what the main screen will look like. Click on Get a U.S. Passport. On the next screen, you have a lot of different options. You will need to click on Apply in Person. If this is your first time applying for a SIP, you will use Form DS-11. Additionally, individuals who are 16 and under will fill out this form. If you are renewing your SIP, you will use Form DS-82. For the purpose of this video, I will be discussing how to fill out a Form DS-11 as the DS-82 will be done the same way. You will need to click on Fill Out Form DS-11 and then click on Form Filler. It has to be done via Form Filler in order to get the required barcode on the application. You will then be brought to a page where you have to read the Privacy and Computer Fraud and Abuse Acts notices and disclaimers. After you have read it, you will need to click I have read the Privacy and Computer Fraud and Abuse Acts notices and disclaimers and then click Submit. The next page will have three different options. You will fill out online and print, report lost or stolen passports, or check the status of your passport. You will need to click Submit under Fill Out Online and Print. On the first part of the application, you will be filling out information about yourself. You will need to fill out first name, last name, middle name is optional, date of birth, city of birth, country of birth, the state or territory of birth, your social security number, and if you are filling out the application for an infant and you do not have a social security number yet, you will just use zeros. So 000 000. You will then fill out the gender, height, hair color, eye color, occupation, and the employer or school. After you will need to fill out the address. If you are applying at Osan Air Base, Republic of Korea, you will need to use the following address, which I have also filled out in the boxes as an example. The address is, if you are Air Force, DFGN, DOD slash DFGN, Washington, D.C., 20006. If you are Army, you will use DAGN. If you are Navy, you will use DNGN. And if you are the Marines, you will use DMGN. After that, click yes for this is your permanent address and continue to fill out the red asterisks. You can choose either mail or email as your preferred method of communication. However, if there are any issues with your application, the agency will reach out to the passport agents and in turn, we will be reaching out to you. After, you will need to fill out your travel plans. If you have known travel plans, this is where you will input said information. If you are unsure of your travel plans, you can keep this blank. After, you will need to fill out an emergency contact. Note, they do not have to be on the peninsula. So make sure you fill out the first and last name, street address, city, state, zip code, telephone number, and the relationship to the applicant. 
After clicking next, you will be asked if you have ever been issued any of the following, a passport book, passport card, both, or none. If this is your first time applying for a SIP, you will need to answer no, even if you have a tourist passport, as this is your first time applying for a SIP. If you click yes, and if the pa passport was lost or stolen, you will need to fill out a DS-64 in conjunction and include it with your application. If you still have the passport, you will need to fill out the date your most recent passport was issued, your name is printed on your most recent book, and the book number. Next, you will need to include the applicant's parent and spouse information. If the mother and father are known, you will need to fill out the first and middle name, last name, date of birth, place of birth, gender, and if they are a U.S. citizen. If they are unknown, you will click the unknown box. For the spouse of applicant, you'll either click yes or no if the applicant has ever been married, which then you'll be prompted on the date of your marriage. On the next page, if you have had any other name, this is where you would annotate that. Lastly, you will need to review over your information in each section. This will be your last chance to be able to edit the application, so ensure all the information is correct. If it is correct, you will press Next. You will then be given several options for a passport. You will need to choose Passport Book as this is the only option available for a SIP. Do not worry about the payment it is asking as this is not applicable for SIPs and this is the same application you would fill out if you were filling out a tourist passport. You will then click on Routine Service as expedites have to be approved by an 07 or higher. Next, click on Standard Delivery and then click Next. You will need to scroll to the bottom of the next page and you will need to acknowledge the steps and information. Note, do not sign your DS-11 as this has to be done in person. Make sure to print the form. So, what's next? You are now ready to set up an appointment to apply for your SIP. You will need to email the 51st Passport Office at 51fss.passport at us.af.mil to schedule your appointment. But what will you need to bring to your appointment? Your DS-11 or DS-82 that we just went over, two passport photos, proof of citizenship such as passport, birth certificate, consular report of birth abroad, or naturalization certificate. You will need your orders. If you are a CSP dependent, your spouse's orders that brought you here are what we need. If you are a military member, your TDY order slash MFR with justification on why you need a SIP is what you will provide. If you are a civilian, we will need both your travel agreement and letter of employment. If you are a non-CSP, you cannot apply for your passport to the follow-on location until these orders have been published. We will also need identification, such as a military ID or driver's license, and any other documents that are applicable such as name change, court orders, marriage certificate, divorce decrees, etc. Please note, everyone that is applying for a passport needs to be in attendance. If one of the parents cannot be present for a minor application, they will need a notarized DS-3053. In conclusion, you should now know what a SIP is, how to apply for a SIP, and what the next step is once you have your application.